On the six screens, Hello Network, earning the reputation of giving all the right ingredients, uninhibited, and exposing the hard, cold facts about the Watchtower Society. Disney. Well, hello everyone and welcome in, welcome in to JW World News. We really appreciate you coming in tonight. And uh, my name is Rick Farron. I'm coming to you from the epicenter of apostasy, right up here in Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, wow, I was just saying to Anne Marie, if you're listening to the last program, that we have unusual traffic coming in tonight. Lots of people are coming in, and they're, they're listening into the six screen. Well, what does that tell you? Anne Marie was just talking about Reddit, you know, the XJW Reddit forum, where people post about the Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, they have 98,000 people posting in there, so they're growing exponentially. The six screens is growing exponentially, and all of the YouTubers are getting more views than ever before. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me. It tells me that there's more and more Jehovah's Witnesses leaving the organization. So it's just amazing to me, just in the last six months, and it seems to, it seems to kind of revolve around all of these big changes that have taken place in the Watchtower. And I want to welcome, I want to welcome, we have a lot of people coming in tonight from Reddit, and we really thank you for coming in. I know that uh, earlier, many years ago, we, we got kind of accused of sensationalizing and over-amplifying things, but now it seems like everybody who does YouTube's are, we weren't over-amplifying and sensationalizing. This is happening. This is true. But we're accused of, of doing that. But, you know, one thing we do here on the six screens is we give everybody a voice. We don't really, we don't really delete bad comments. I, I, I let people see all the comments, but we give everyone a voice. We want to know everything that's going on behind the curtains of the watch show, as you do. I want to know everything. I, I want to hear about the Illuminati. I want to hear about the false teachings. I want to hear about the dark and tainted secrets. I want to hear about the satanic ritual abuse and all of this stuff. I want to hear what everybody has to say. Now, that doesn't mean that I agree with everything, but I've been accused of that. <clears throat> but I said from our very inception 19 years ago that we want everybody that's been touched by the tentacles of the Watchtower to be able to come on and tell us what they know. We've heard it all. We've had every apostate you can possibly think of, uh, possibly think of here on the six screens, except for Ray Franz. He came very close, former governing body member who wrote the book, The Crisis of Conscience. He came very close about 12 years ago, but he just didn't want to come on. And I'll, well, there's reasons for that. But anyway, it's just about everyone else has been on. We have on our network, we have Barbara Anderson. Everybody knows Barbara Anderson, right? She's been around for a long time. She knows a lot about the Jehovah's Witness history. She has her own program on here. So we have a little network just for those coming in for the first time. Uh, JW World News is just one of the programs on the Six Screens Tele Network. We have a dozen programs going right now. And they're, 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 they're actually hosted by former Jehovah's Witnesses. And we appreciate their efforts. Like Anne Marie, she had a program on before us called Touch by the Tentacles. And we appreciate all she does for us, as well as all the people that do these programs on the six screens. Well, <clears throat> you know, with the original, I, I want to make it known that the six screens is the original JW World News. Uh, we, we bring you the facts, we bring you the news, and we bring you the truth about the Watchtower organization. And uh, I want you to know that I really appreciate you guys sending me every day I get people writing me with like a JW News Clearinghouse here, and people send me information every day. My phone basically is dinging all night long as well on stories that they come across, so all you folks come across, and you send it to me, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much for doing that. I really, really appreciate that. It helps me a lot when I put the news together, because what I try to find is the biggest items or the big elephant in the room that we say. And we try to talk about that every week here in the six screens. Well, let me take a look here. 
Uh, I want to talk a little bit. We, we do have the convention coming up, the X Witness Convention. I want to mention every Saturday night. I'll just be very brief with it. Uh, the theme of the convention is still alive in 2025. Now, we're going to have that convention in 2025, not 2024, friends, 2025. And the <clears throat> proposed date or the date that we're trying to get solidified with the Hilton Hotel is uh, it's actually August 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 2025. Now, already I got 167, 168 people that have written me and they want to come. Now, if I haven't written back, it's because I don't have the ticket. I'm going to send you tickets. Tickets are free, but I don't have the date. I'm still trying to work. I know I sound like a broken record. I'm trying to work with the Hilton Hotel here in the Boston area and get a date solidified so I can tell you what date it is on your ticket. But all of those people that have written me wanting tickets, don't worry. I, I, I got everyone here. And uh, very shortly, as soon as I get a date, we'll get you on. We'll get a ticket out to you. So bear that in mind, we're going to have a three-day convention. Uh, on Friday, we're going to have the meet and greet. We're going to have all of these people that are coming in. We have room for 500 people. So get these seats numbered because it looks like now uh, it's going to be on a first-come, first-served basis. So those that, get the, those, those that get to sit down in the auditorium, we only have room for about 500. So I want to let you know that get, get, you, get it in fast here so that can, you can have your number. And all, when we get up to 500, anything over that, people will have to kind of grab a seat if someone leaves or poke their head in the window or the door. So, you know, get your, get, get your tickets. They're free. And I don't know what the room cost is going to be, but they said they'd give us a discount of 20%. But I'm just going to project this. The room cost is going to be about $150 a night. So, you know, you got plenty of time to save up for the convention. So still alive in 2025. I hope you can be up here with us. Uh, the response has been unbelievable. So see if you can't make it. All right. Now, also, you see the duck up here. Uh, there's the duck, right? He's right up there. Now, if that duck comes down, I, I got something new I'm going to give you tonight. Thanks to a fella out in Washington State. Uh, many people know him as Nathan, 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 Nathan. He's on uh, JWN. And uh, he actually, uh, he sent me some books. He, he wants me to give them away. Uh, so I'm going to hold some of these up. Now, here's some older publications that have been reprinted. This one here is a publication by the Watchtower, The Way to Paradise. What a foolish book this is. I'm going to give that away for prize tonight. Uh, also, we got Millions Now Living Will Never Die. You have a chance to win that. That's republished. It's not the original uh, book, booklet, a book it was actually, but it is nonetheless, word for word, it's been republished, and we can give you that as a prize as well. And we've got uh, the latest one. He just sent me a bunch of books this week. He wants me to give them away here, the six queens, a people for his name. This is all about Jehovah's Witness organization. I want to give that book away. So if the duck comes down, you say the secret word, and uh, you can win one of these books tonight. And we'll have at the end of the program, we'll have a little lightning round, try to give some books away here. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, all right. So, in fact, if you hear this noise, that we have we have some secret words. I actually have them in a sealed envelope. Here's the envelope right here. You can see it. Uh, I have two secret words in there tonight, and they have to do with Jehovah's Witnesses. So if anyone says the word and calling in tonight, and it's a secret word, and they say it, you'll hear this. You'll hear that noise. If that noise, then you win a prize. Okay, so let's look forward to that. All right. So we covered that. Uh, do you, I mean we all know it? We we all know what's going on in the Watchtower. They they are hemorrhaging more than ever. In the 19 years I've been doing this program, I can honestly tell you that this is big time. We are getting points on the school board. Uh, uh, everything indicates that they are losing members like never, ever before. And uh, I, I, I know that for a fact. And, well, I do. Yes, I do. My wife, Susan, she was on Facebook. Have you looked at the, jo at the Jehovah's Witness Facebook sites? Yeah, there's a number of them, but she was on one. And the Jehovah's Witnesses, they're really the, the actual loyal Jehovah's Witnesses. They're saying the same thing the apostates are saying. 
they really are. They're, they're, they're also disagreeing with all these changes and why they are doing it. There's hundreds, thousands, millions even of Jehovah's Witnesses that are questioning what's going on in the watch tower. Did someone want to say something? 714, you want to know, what did you want to say? Oh, hi, Rick. It's Nadine calling. Hi, Nadine. Yep. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. I just wanted to tell you that I am planning on going to the memorial tomorrow. Well, very, very good. I'm going, yeah. Because, um, well, there's a couple of reasons. I, I wasn't going to go, and I don't really want to go, but I want to see what's going on. And I want to see how people are going to act and kind of observe and what they're wearing. And so I can just get like an inside view of it myself. So I'm going to go. And it's not going to be at the Kingdom Hall. It's going to be a community center, a very nice community center. So they're combining two congregations together. So I feel a little bit of better about it that it's not going to be at Kingdom Hall because I don't want to go into a Kingdom Hall. So anyways, I wanted to let you know that that's what I'm going to do. And so then I'm going to report back to um, Fran, Joe and Fran, and tell them what I saw. And I can tell you what I saw too. Yeah, well, well next week you can do that. I'm, I'm planning on going to the memorial myself tomorrow night. But I'm going to be going mm -hmm. in protesting outside the Kingdom Hall, and uh, we're going right. to do we're going to do a live stream uh, tomorrow, beginning at 6:30 Eastern Time, and uh, we'll see how the brothers and sisters are dressed. We'll see if they have their ties. We'll see if they have slacks on. We'll see if they have beards. So that'll be tomorrow night, right here on our network. But I want your pictures too. You sent me some pictures. Maybe we can make like a little, a little collage. I think that'd be excellent, Nadine. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I um, I won't be taking pictures, and I also have my whole outfit laid out. I'm going to be wearing flats. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing pants and some boots and a real pretty top with a belt. So I have everything already laid out. Because it's going to be cold tomorrow night here. In California, it was cold today and raining, and so I am going to be wearing pants, and I'm going to see how many sisters are going to be in pants. It's going to be very interesting. I'm really going for curiosity, and um, I'm going to be an undercover, undercover reporter. Well, that's uh, that's what I like. I, I like undercover reporters. That would be wonderful. <laughs> That would be wonderful, Nadine. Yeah. yeah, no, that yeah. it's gonna feel it's gonna really feel good to uh, to mm -hmm. observe to to observe the witnesses. It's gonna be a shock to your system. You know, you're so used to the witnesses yeah. all dressed up, prim and proper. But we're gonna see what's going on tomorrow night. Maybe they might not be as okay. casual. Where's the memorial? But only time will tell. Right. Well, I'm gonna be in pants, but mine's a dressy outfit, so it will be dignified. So, um, who gave that talk? Mark Sanderson. He said it has to be dignified looking black. So, these are dignified. So, I think he'd be happy with that. Well, make, make, sure, um, make sure we get, make sure we get uh, you know, a picture of you with the slacks on. We can put that up. Okay. The, yeah, make sure we get that too. Yeah. So, we'll know that people can see you. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. And the thing is, too, I was never just fellowship, I just faded. So I'm actually going to know people at this memorial. And so um, when I went to a memorial service last year, not the memorial, but somebody had passed away, um, I talked, a lot of people came up to me and talked to me and they were very nice. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to see quite a few people that I've known for years and years, but, um, you know, I've been faded away for since like 2010. So it's been a while, but they still know me because they knew me when, from the time I was very, very young, very little, because I was uh, born in. So it's going to be very interesting, I think. And people will talk to me, you know, because like I said, I was never disfellowshipped. 
Well, that is really uh, fast, uh, that's that's fantastic. I'm dying to hear what they would say to you. So you you keep us you keep us posted. My guy, I like I like your courage. Thank you for doing that. I, I want more people to do exactly what you're doing. I think that's a courageous thing to do. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Rick. And and I do feel better, like I said, that it's not going to be at a Kingdom Hall, but it's going to be at a community center. That makes me feel better. That makes me feel not so bad because I don't really want to go inside the Kingdom Hall. Right, um, right. No, in fact, the fact that that's, that's what they're doing this year as well, but they've been doing it for the last few years, meeting in a community center. Uh -huh. and, and they're doing that to, uh -huh. to give the illusion of growth. So they... Uh, they won't. They might have three or four kingdom halls. That don't have a lot of attendance for the memorial, so they'll right. combine. They'll combine them. And oh, look at the growth! Look at all the people. You know. Well, the the reason why they're doing it is because there's going to be two congregations together. Because I don't think there's enough in just one congregation. So they're putting them together at the community center. I think that's what they're doing. Exactly, that's what they're doing. Well, you were. Uh, you you got their uh, you got the little idea of what's going on, uh, Nadine. You we appreciate you yeah. always coming on and sharing these things with us. So we're looking forward to to getting your picture and seeing what's going on out there in California. Well, yes, I will take pictures and I will be back in touch and I'll let you know. I'll let everyone know what I thought about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm tempted to drink the wine. I'm tempted to take a sip of the wine. Well, you know, Nadine, there's going to be that. That's one thing I'm going to be watching tomorrow night, too. Of course, I'm not going to be in the hall. Uh, I do have a permit from the uh, police department to do a protest. They don't want me going on the land. And I can't go in. But I would be, I, I think the numbers are going to go up big time with people partaking. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I think we were the, in, in 2023, there was approximately, I believe it was 22,000 partakers. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if the 2024 is going to bring over 30,000. Right. Yeah. Right. It will be interesting, and I will let everybody know. I'll let you know. I'm going to take pictures, and I'll be talking with Fran, too, about it, um, because they do a show on Wednesdays um, on Vern's show, Fixing My Faith. So... I will be reporting back. Well, Nadine, thank you. And don't you ever change. You just keep staying, Nadine. You're doing a wonderful job. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Nadine. Okay. Thank you, Rick. I'm going to be listening to your entire program. Oh, well, thank, well, thank you. I know you like it. And yeah, we always appreciate you coming on. Well, yeah, that's okay. Nadine. That's Nadine. And she's doing a good job out there in California exposing the witnesses. Now, you know, the thing I want to bring up at the protest tomorrow, if you're in the New England area or you're anywhere, if you'd like to come out tomorrow night and go to a protest at a, at a Kingdom Hall, we will be doing it tomorrow. We've been doing it now for over 15 years at the Wilmington Kingdom Hall in Wilmington, Massachusetts. It's on Bridge Lane, one Bridge Lane in Wilmington, Massachusetts. So if you're in the area, come on down. We, we got masks for you as well. You might say, well, I don't want anyone to see me, but we want to come and stand on the front lines, put your boots on the ground, as we say. We'll put a mask on you. No one will recognize you. But once you come on down and see us, in fact, I'll tell you, tell you what I do. For all those that come and be with us, I'll order some pizza. We'll have some pizza. We'll have the, the Domino's pizza guy come and give us all a nice pizza. It's going to be a little cold out there tomorrow night. But if you can make it, I would love it. We had two years ago a man from New Jersey came all the way up. He traveled 250 miles just to be with us. I thought that was really, really good. So if you're in the area, by all means, come and join us at the protest tomorrow. All right, as I was saying, everything indicates that the Watchtower is losing members exponentially. They are hemorrhaging. Yes, and, and one reason I can say that, as I was saying earlier, my wife, Susan, was helping me find some news articles to talk about this week. And she ran a call across on, on uh, Facebook. They have a Jehovah's Witness site uh, group. And it's Jehovah's Witnesses. It's peenies. It's loyal Jehovah's Witnesses, supposedly. But you should see the things they are writing. You, you can't differentiate the Jehovah's Witness Facebook group from the ex-Jehovah's Witness 
Facebook group. It, it's like they know that something's wrong. They're all writing about the changes. Why are they changing? And I'm getting reports coming into the six screens that this is not going over well. People really are not saying, oh, this is wonderful, all these changes. So I have to tell you that this is going to create some real serious problems in the watchtower. See, the watchtower, the, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses are catching on that the Jehovah's Witness watchtower organization is lying. Now, we know as ex-witnesses, they lie about almost everything. But the Jehovah's Witnesses themselves, they're just starting to see that they're lying. Now, why, why would they see that? They're seeing it because of the fact of all of these changes. Wouldn't you feel like you were lied to? You know, they used to say that you can't wear a beard. beard. They never gave you scriptural uh, reasons for it, but now they're saying you can. Same thing with women wearing slacks. The same thing with reporting time. So in many respects, they were kind of lying to you and actual peemies, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses that are still loyal, they're starting to question that. They're saying, you, you lied to us. You know, that is a, geez, you don't want to ever be caught in a lie. Now, now all of a sudden, the witnesses are going to start looking at everything the Watchtower says. And they're going to say, geez, you know, is the Watchtower lying about other things as well? Now, now the other thing we realize, and the, also the act of Jehovah's Witness, loyal witnesses, Haney's physically and mentally in, what they're seeing is the Watchtower is getting in big time trouble in many countries around the world. Now that's unsettling. That's unsettling for many Jehovah's Witnesses. And they, you know, many Jehovah's Witnesses right now, they're learning about all of the things the Watchtower has been covering up because of all of these changes. They're starting to look online and they're learning about the child sex abuse. They're learning about the shunning. They're learning about suicides. They're learning about false teachings. So this is really opening Pandora's box uh, but I'll tell you what, the Watchtower has been quiet. They've been quite literally quiet, but they realize they are hemorrhaging members. So they're lying that, you know, the numbers are going up, but they got to be very careful with that. They keep insisting that they are growing leaps and bounds. Uh, but how can you be growing leaps and bounds when you're quietly closing down and selling off thousands of kingdom halls? And I underline the word thousands. Thousands, literally thousands of kingdom halls uh, being closed down, as well as some assembly halls. Uh, they're dissolving hundreds of congregations. How, how can you really say that they're growing when this is all happening? They're merging many more congregations in with one another. Uh, they're closing down branches. They're sending hundreds of Bethelites packing. And they're closing down, as we mentioned, closing down and selling off assembly halls as well. And they're, they're pocketing all the proceeds. The watchtower is making out like a bandit. And they're constantly crying for more and more money. They are losing money. Not only are they losing money, they're losing their reputation. They're losing government grants. Well, we've been talking about Norway. Now all Europe. They're getting a mouthful from the country of Norway. Now all of Europe is beginning to say, hey, what kind of an organization is the Watchtower? They really are a cult, really. So, you know, they could lose millions and millions and millions of dollars. So they've got to make these changes. That's what these changes are all about. And, yes, they have been losing way more people a year since COVID. Yeah, COVID-19 was the cult buster. I have to tell you, that really hurt the Jehovah's Witnesses, even though they claimed with their PR people coming forward from the public information department like that, Robert Hendricks. He's not with them anymore. But he would come on during COVID. Oh, we are doing wonderful. Oh, our organization is growing so much, and Jehovah is blessing us. And even though we can't go out and service and talk to people at the doors. We're all writing letters and the witnesses love this. That was a bunch of baloney. That was hogwash. So <laughs> COVID-19, I'm going to call it the great cult buster. Uh, their numbers are declining. And not only because of COVID, 
But you know, you know, when I go back, I get on the trail, I start picking up crumbs. And I, I find some things that really are monumental discussions that made a lot of witnesses leave the organization. In one discussion, I see, I go back to the generation. You know, how many times can you change the generation? I have counted 16, one six times, the Watchtower has changed a generation since their inception. And uh, people just aren't buying that. Now, this generation, as we all were taught, well, that would be the generation that will not pass away before Armageddon. So originally, as they said, that generation was 1914. And they said that the people that who were living then Welcome to Touch by the would not be not the Okay, we got the world of the Jehovah's Witnesses conform. All right. Well, we got some of these drunken Bethelites coming in on us again. So we'll have to keep an eye on them. But any anyways, uh, they uh, the generation is really what caused a lot of witnesses to take a second look at the they, 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 they did take a yeah, we got that guy right there coming in. So we'll just keep blocking him off. These are drunken Bethelite friends. I have to tell you, they, they come in once in a while. Uh, the Watchtower hates what we do. They hate what we do, but they uh, they keep trying to come in on us. But what they do with Bethel is on Saturday night, I mean, they drink like crazy, and they have nothing better to do than call the six greens and try to, uh, try to disrupt our program. But we're on to them. We get it. So the generation is what really caused a lot of problems. And the Watchtower American uh, within is, is now dealing with this, and it's a very difficult thing for them to do. They they uh, they now are also confronted with the internet. The internet is the great equalizer. We said that before. Uh, this technology is killing. It's killing the Jehovah's Witness organization as, as, well, as, well as, as well as any cults. It's unbelievable. So I just wanted to bring that up here tonight. And I'm just going to mute these guys here. I'm trying to do the best I can to keep them from coming in. Uh, let's, let's mute all. Okay. All right. So let's put, uh, yeah, just so we can kind of, all right, mute all. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. Great. All right. Okay. Okay. Native Native American American. Fan. All right. Yeah, friends, we have, uh, we, we have, you know, it's very difficult to uh, control the panel we have here, but we do the best we can. I'm a one-man operation here in my little studio. I've got a number of computers working. I'm trying to, you know, put security up against this. But we have had in the past where these people come in and try to disrupt the program. But uh, we'll uh, we'll just continue on and do what we can with it. The conference has been locked. Okay, we'll lock the con conference for now so I can get done with some business here. Then we'll open it up later and we'll be able to discuss some things. Uh, so anyways, uh, you know, people, the internet has been so wonderful in helping people leave the organization. And one thing that helped me leave the organization <clears throat> back in 2005 was the UN. And now people, many, many witnesses are just starting to learn about the UN. And many witnesses are now starting to learn about the child abuse issues that keep creeping up. And uh, this is now like a big snowball effect. Men, this, a snowball rolling down the hill, right? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's exactly what's happening in Watchtower. The people leave, leaving are getting bigger and big, bigger and bigger. So the Watchtower, <clears throat> they're trying to do a lot right now, but it's too late. It's too late. Uh, they are now to the point that people know who they are. I am glad to tell you that uh, it's, it's millions of people. You just stop and think about it. How, how many PMOs do you think are out there? How many PMOs do you think are out there? In fact, some numbers, uh, some people have suggested that this, if, if the Watchtower is claiming there's 8 million people, that 4 million are PMOs. That is physically in, mentally out. They don't believe it. So some are saying half of the organization is PMOs. Well, that is just totally, totally amazing. Uh, many assemblies, in fact, were getting reports coming in. You, you know, for a fact, when you went to your circuit assembly, there was always like a, at least a thousand people. I know when I went to Natick, Massachusetts, there was um, there was like two thousand people. 
But that's all cut back now. I'm getting reports coming into the six screens that, you know, they're getting 600 people, 700 people. So where is everybody? They are going out of the organization like crazy. As a matter of fact, some assemblies, they're actually roping off, according off, you know, but with rope, one third of the, one third of the entire arena. Uh, so, you know, they don't want, they, they want to try to get it filled up, but they're, they're putting everyone together so it looks more filled than it is. Friends, the Watchtower is a leaking ship. It's going down, it's going down fast. Uh, and, and, you know, the thing is, ma many politicians, the governments, are beginning to see what kind of controlling cult or what kind of uh, an organization this is. They're looking at it as a very controlling cult. And I think the changes that they are making now, that is all of these changes with the dress code, uh, they, they are in some type of a crisis plan, whether it's the lawyers or someone is giving them information to save themselves, that they need to save themselves. And uh, they're listening to someone that's saying, change this quick. It's not, it's not changing it because they want to help the brothers and sisters. They're changing it to help themselves. Okay, so let's unmute everyone. If you'd like to come in and say hello to us, uh, we'll unmute it right away. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, Rick, I just ran on Reddit. I don't know. I haven't been able to check it out. But it says that there's a congregation that the elders are not accepting this dress code. And they're not going along with the disfellowshipping. And they've asked everybody in the congregation not to, to talk about it until they have a chance to check it out more. Anyway, it sounds to me like they're, they're balking against uh, the governing body on that. I just thought I'd bring that up and just read it. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad that you did to bring that out. And uh, I, I believe that uh, that's true. There's going to be some congregations that will not go along with all of this. There's going to be a lot of splinter groups. They're going to say, "No, we're not. We're not going to go along with this. There's something wrong at the top." So we're going to, you're going to hear a lot more of this. Do you believe it? Uh, all participants are unmuted. <laughs> all participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. What do you think? You think that uh, that uh, that's true, or you think someone's making that up? Do you think there's going to be congregations that won't go along with this, Colin? Well, I'm not sure you can hear me. Uh, go ahead and hit uh, go ahead and hit star six if you want to speak up. You're running with us right now, so go ahead and hit star six. That'll unmute you. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut that uh, person off, but uh, you can uh, you can unmute yourself by hitting star six on your telephone pad. So, anyways, I wanted to bring up tonight. I just want to make sure that uh, I'll go ahead, uh, seven one nine. You're back on with us. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say I do agree with you. I think some of these congregations are going to balk about that because they're going to realize that something. That dress code may become something more serious than what we thought it would. Oh, yeah. No, no, no doubt about it. It's going to be more serious. We're going to get a little bit more into that as we go on the program. But, but you know, what I did notice, and a lot of people have been writing me and giving me information, is that uh, they, they have been giving these updates for the last three months all about the memorial and how they want to get as many witnesses as possible to go out and get these disfellowship ones or get people that have not disfellowship ones all the time just recently but they've been really pushing to get as many people to the memorial as they possibly can they, they were thinking that this year's memorial will not be well attended so they're pushing the witnesses and it's unbelievable some of the chat that i see going on in the congregations and people have been giving me information that they've been getting you know calls left and right one person said that this week alone he got 10 calls from Jehovah's Witnesses inviting him to come back. He's a disfellowship one, inviting him to come back to the Kingdom Hall. So people who have left the organization, they're getting more invites to the memorial than ever before. I mean, like 10 times more. 
I mean, in the past, they, well, you want to come to the memorial with us? Now, every witness is out trying to get every single person they can to attend the memorial. Our relatives, relatives are sending that update video of Sanderson with the beard. And now you can, now you can wear slacks. And now you don't have to wear a tie. And so they're sending that video to their Jehovah's Witness relatives that aren't coming to the meetings anymore. And they're asking for their feedback. What do you think, John? What do you think about Brother Sanderson saying we don't have to wear a tie anymore? So they're hoping this is going to get a lot of people going to the memorial. As a matter of fact, one person even gave me information that he went to his door. There's three brochures left in his door to come to the memorial uh, by three different witnesses. Unbelievable. 813, you're on with us. What do you have to say? Hit star six, 813. You're on with us. Hello. Uh, yes. Hi, yes. I um I um actually I don't know why I'm so nervous, but everybody was telling me to call in, so <laughs> um I'm actually from Tampa, Tampa Bay, Florida. And um you know what? Actually, the Jehovah's Witnesses came to my door today. <laughs> they did? What they say? They Well, they actually did a return visit on me. I'm actually an inactive witness. I've been inactive for about five years now. And I'm basically being shunned from my whole family because um, I started going to another church. And so that is considered apostasy. And I was being outspoken on YouTube and stuff like that. So my mom completely stopped talking to me about six months ago. But um, it, it's crazy because um, so, so the witnesses came to my door a couple of days ago and they gave me the invitation to the memorial and stuff like that. And I'm debating whether or not to go. And I'm so scared and I'm so nervous and I don't know why. <laughs> but um, so, so they came to me today and we literally talked about everything that you described about the governing body changes, the, the dress and grooming, and I was telling them how problematic it was for me because I felt like, you know, I grew up as a witness, so strict, you know, really rigid, was like, we used to go out and say was three times a day, sometimes, like, my mom was really fanatical, and now people could just dress however they want and wear beards, and, you know, like, I feel like it's, it's so disrespectful. <laughs> Um, but anyways, I, I was just letting them know how, how crazy it was for me. And, you know, they invited me to do a Bible study and stuff like that. So I don't know what I'm going, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I do, I did tell them, you know, like, I was really upfront with them. And I'm saying, look, you know, they call me an apostate just because, you know, I started a YouTube channel. I started making videos. I, I'm, I'm more outspoken now than I have ever been. And just because of that, I'm being shunned and I'm being labeled. And, you know, it, it's hurtful and it's sad, but I'm more happier now than ever. And I know that I will never become a Jehovah's Witness again, but I haven't officially, like, made it. You know, like I, I didn't, I didn't disassociate, and I'm not the fellowship. So it feels like I don't even know if I should make it official. Like, like I don't even know what to do. I, I don't know. But I just wanted to come on and and just talk to you guys. Well, can we, can we get your name? Oh, my name is Ruby. Well, oh, Ruby, you know, I'm familiar with Tampa Bay. I used to live over in Brandon years ago. Uh but Ruby, I thank you for coming. I, I just want to ask you a question now. When the witnesses are inviting you to go to the memorial, did any one of them suggest that they're real? Were they really, really near the end of the world? I mean, Armageddon's around the corner. Did anyone suggest that to you? Yeah, because when I was mentioning like how my mom treated me when I told her I didn't want to become a witness anymore, the the sister tells me, "Well, you know, maybe she's just afraid and she didn't know how to react because we're so close to the end." And then I, I, I started laughing, and I'm like, yeah, you know how long they've been saying that, but, you know, I feel like she should at least respect, you know, my my religion or, you know, like, we have three different religions. So I think that we should have mutual respect for each other. I don't have a problem that she's a witness, but she has a major problem that I'm not one, and she's not respecting that. So, I mean, I don't, 
like, well, it doesn't even matter to me. I don't care how close we are to the end. <laughs> if I want to still be a Christian and go to the, and go to church, I should be able to do that and not lose my family. And she, you know, they, they blame me and they say, oh, well, you know, you abandoned your faith. Like, that's what she told me. You abandoned your faith. And, you know, it was like this whole mess. And I'm like, no, mom, I'm contrary. My faith has increased. I want to find God. I want to go to church. I, I want to do these things. I just don't want to go to a team of all to do it. And I don't feel like you have to go to a kingdom all to be Christian. You can still be Christian and and worship God. And unfortunately, she shuns me for exercising my freedom of religion. And so I'm telling all of this to the sister. And she's just looking at me <laughs> going off. And I'm like, well, that's basically the reason why I'm not going back anymore because of how bad she treated me. And they didn't really have anything to say about that. And I was just like, you know, you know, I was nice about it. I was polite, but honestly, that's the truth. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be bullied and and like have this fear, you know, like be like a fear tactic just to go to the team of all because I'm not afraid of Armageddon anymore. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of any of that anymore. Like once I realize that I'm not gonna live forever and that I'm mortal and and that I need to live my life right now and do what's best for me now. None of, none of the kingdom of God matters anymore. But it's so sad that those decisions are not respected for me. And I'm and I'm super young, you know, like I'm only 27 years old and I have three kids and it's like I'm trying to do everything on my own. And sometimes it's hard. Yeah. Well, Ruby, you were quite the woman, quite the young woman, and it is hard. And our heart goes out for you. But boy, now, now you're starting to see some freedom. And, and I'm so glad you called in here tonight, Ruby. Really, you, you made my night. I'm, I'm so glad you did. I see I see that you post there on the on the YouTube. But but thank you, Ruby, for coming in. Now, you're a brave woman. And, and don't you let these guys change you at all. You just keep staying away from the watchtower. You'll be so much better off in life. You'll have real freedom. Thank you, Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. What else would you like thank to say, you. Ruby? Yeah, uh, thank you. I hate to have you get too emotional, but I mean, it hurts. It really does hurt what the Watchtower has done to people. But you're a brave woman, and uh, th thank you for coming on, Ruby. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, that's Ruby. She writes there on our chat on YouTube. But you know, she was saying that you know the witnesses were saying too that you know Ruby come to the memorial. You know, the end is getting really, really, really near. And, you know, even some witnesses and some of the people reporting into me what the invites to the memorial have been for them, uh, some of the witnesses saying, well, come back to the memorial. Come to the memorial. This might be the last memorial ever. You know, we, we, every, I mean, they've been saying that for 40 years, right? This might be the last memorial ever. Uh, I rather doubt it. So, you know, I have to tell you that, that there's an all-out effort to try to get as many people to the memorial as possible because I really believe the Watchtower feels they might not get the people there this year. And I'm going to be watching for the partakers. I think the partakers are going to go way up. Now, last year, I believe it was 22,000, 21,000 in there somewhere. I think the partakers this year could shoot way up. I'm, I'm talking maybe 30,000. That's a possibility. I don't know, but it could happen. Uh, there's a seismic shift. There is a seismic shift taking place right now with dress code. I'm going to use that term, seismic sh shift. Uh, I know the dress code, it might not seem like a big issue. It seems like a minor issue. But on a psychological level, it could be way bigger than we think. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, up until now, the dress code was kind of a Jehovah's Witness uniform for men and women. You know, when I went out in service and when I gave a talk and when I went to the assemblies, conventions in the Kingdom Hall, I always wore, always wore a suit and a tie. That, that was my uniform as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was proud to do that. I, I, I like dressing up. The rest of the world didn't dress up, but I wanted to put a suit on. I wanted to put a tie on. And uh, even the sisters, they, they, they love to put on their nice long skirts and dresses. And you guys all know what I'm talking about, right? 
But now there seems to be a seismic shift taking place in the watchtower concerning dress code. Uh, you know, when we were witnesses, we felt unified by all wearing basically the, the same type of dress, right? The same type of clothing. Now it's literally a free for all, relatively speaking. I mean, you can almost dress any way you want, according to the watchtower. I mean, with restraints, I'm sure, but a free for all for many. The boundaries of this dress code in the watchtower is going to be pushed to the limits. You just watch and see. Now, the question would be how does this affect? the witness psychological level. Well, what is the average Jehovah's Witness? What, what's going on in their mind when now they're told they don't have to wear a tie, they can wear slacks, the women can wear slacks, uh, the men don't have to even wear a jacket, they can just wear a shirt. So what do you think the psychological effects would be? Let me just check this phone here and see what this is. Uh, okay, well, we can't, uh, can't answer that call now. We get to... Uh, we got a lot of things going on here. So what is the psychological effect level? What's it going to be like? How, how are the witness psychologically going to accept all of this? Uh, you know, this, there's been studies done. And I was looking up today online. Uh, there's been studies done on the concept of wearing uniforms as a unit, like the military. And I'm thinking, well, what, what does it do when everyone wears a uniform? Like in the military, well, it affects group think. If everyone's dressed basically the same, it really puts you into a group and you all think alike. Uh, I, I found this very profound. Uh, I even see in the Catholic Church, they don't do it as much today in these parochial schools, but they did it years ago, where all of the children would dress, you know, the boys would dress the same and the girls would dress the same. And, you know, it was like group think, we're all Catholics. Well, in the, in the Jehovah's Witness world, it's groupthink as well. Uh, we're all Jehovah's Witnesses because this is how we look when we go out in service. This is how we look when we go to the Kingdom Hall. Uh, time will tell how this actually truly affects the Jehovah's Witness culture. But this whole dress code circus might have had a bigger impact than it appears on the surface. Did you think of that? Uh, many, many witnesses, I'm sure, that scratch in the head. I mean, I've got my popcorn ready. I, I want to see what's going to happen. I want to see what type of an impact. It's too early to tell. It's only been a week or so since this information has been out. Now, all these changes that the Watchtower has been making, uh, it, in my mind, way of thinking, it's, it's only weakened the bonds of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, you know, it, it does. In other words, we're not part of this group that we used to be able to identify with. Uh, you can't even tell, you know, who some of these people are. If you see people out going, walking down the neighborhood now, uh, you don't know if the Jehovah's Witnesses or not. So it's kind of weakened their, uh, their bonds, so to speak. Uh, you can't really tell what tribe they're from. Are they Mormons? Are they just people going door to door with some type of a survey? But people always knew they were Jehovah's Witnesses by the way they were dressed. Uh, you could judge them by their dress. Now, this change is already weakening the organization, and it's not going to get better for the organization. Uh, what the Jehovah's Witness organization, the Watch that was trying to do, they're trying their hardest to uh, keep the organization intact. Uh, they're, they're feeling that by letting loose on some of these dress pattern, dress codes, and what have you, that they will be able to get more members in. But just the opposite seems to at least be happening. It's only been a week, so we can't tell for sure, but it seems like they're losing more because of it. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this all unfolds. Uh, my personal opinion, and maybe you guys share the same thoughts with me, I'm not sure what you feel, but my personal opinion uh, on the dress code being changed is you know, they're trying to blend in uh, with the rest of the world. Now, we know we've been talking about it here in the Six Greens for the last three years, four years, really, all about Ramapo. They're trying to build this huge mega video studio, audio video studio up in Ramapo, New York. And some estimates have put the project up to $500 million, a half a billion. 
That's at the high level. I've heard 300 million to 500 million. But the point would be they want to be able to now connect with the world. They're going to have to get people to come in and be connected with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And who is going to connect with the Jehovah's Witnesses? If you got this big operation in store, who is going to connect with JW.org Broadcasting if you can't wear a beard, if you can't wear slacks, if you have to report time every month to them? No one's going to connect. So I'm thinking that uh, this, is a, this is a way that the, the reason why they're changing the dress code and you can wear beards and they want to try to blend in uh, with all the other religions because it seems like that's what they want to be. Uh, they want to attract more people to join because it would be easier if all these restrictions weren't in place. And, and once they get rid of all the hard line of policies of shunning blood, the two witness rule, and reporting sex crimes to the police, uh, they'll, they'll be very much like other Christian religions, except for Jehovah is their God and living on earth instead of heaven. So right now, as we speak, uh, the governments, they have been looking at this cult. They have been taking notice of what's going on behind the curtains of the watchtower. They've been noticing how cult-like they are. That's why we're going to the memorial tomorrow night. I have a banner. You'll see it tomorrow if you listen in. I got I got a big banner that we'll have at the memorial in front of the Kingdom Hall. And it says that Watchtower, I'm sorry, it says Norway gives Watchtower new light. And I have a picture of a man with a beard. And I have a picture of some women with slacks. So it's Norway that gave the Watch of the Jehovah's Witnesses new light. It, it, really, it really wasn't the governing body. Uh, you know, in order for the witnesses to survive, in order for the Watchtower organization to survive, uh, they have to look less like a cult to survive in the long term. Let me reiterate that. In order for them to survive, the Watchtower has to look less like a cult. Now, to many of the European nations, and in even here in America and in Canada, uh, people are looking and scratching their head, wow, is this really a religion or is this a cult? Uh, they're finding out it's a cult, but it's too late, Watchtower. It's too late. You waited too long to, uh, to lift some of these restrictions. Uh, it feels like the Watchtower is in desperation. They, uh, even the Pemis, those that are physically and mentally in there, they, they're, they're, they're writing like it's, they're in desperation. It's desperate. If you've been on some of the Facebook groups, like my wife was on this week and explaining to me, some of the Facebook groups of actual loyal Jehovah's Witnesses are writing all kinds of stuff about what's going on. We're not happy with all of this. They're not happy with the rapid firing, rapid fire changes that are taking place all at once. You, you would think the Watchtower would go very slow with this, but it's happening all at once. Uh, yeah, they've been making steadily uh, changes for some time now, but as of late, it's like too much to bring in these changes all to fruition in such a short period of time. So I'll tell you, it's so interesting. It's so interesting to, to be able to see this all happening, and the Watchtower just continues to hemorrhage. They are bleeding big time. And it's not going well for them. The comma police, these guys have heard so many people. You've heard the word comma, right? Well, the comma police are now at the scene. Who'd like to speak up? You're on with us. Go ahead and hit star six. I'd like to know what you think. I'd like to know what you think. Hey, uh, yes, go ahead. You're on with us. Hey, I, I just want to say like two words to, to describe what's going to happen right now. Uh, disunity and division. Because uh, these guys care so much about it, but it's going to take pants and flaps and beards to bring these people down, basically. Something so stupid and simple because um, they, they're going to cause a lot of dis disunity. Um, I'm hearing on Reddit that people are saying, uh, gee, you know, if you do wear slacks, you should wear some kind of sweatshirt or something over it to cover your bum. 
And if you don't, the sisters are looking at the other sisters with side eyes. And uh, but there's some guys that don't want that aren't uh, on board with the beard change. And um, and I'm hearing things from other people too that I know. And and nobody knows what to do. Uh, do how long do I talk to a disfellowship person for? Um, what if they talk too long back to me? Uh, if they call me at my home, do I call them? Where, where does it end? Like, like, I think that there is going to be major disunity. I know that my cousin, who is a bitch, she will not be happy that the disfellowshipping arrangement um, is softened because she loves torturing people over it. It's just who she is. Uh, I'm not justifying it, but she's an asshole about it. Um, sorry to swear. But uh, I think there's going to be major disunity, and I think there's they're, they're going to bring their own demise. So, uh, if, if you can't get the bees on board with you, the the one people, or the uh, the one part of your your people that has the utmost like uh, loyalty to, then how are you ever going to get that from the, from everybody else? And if you don't have their respect, I, I think Anthony Morris might have been onto something. He probably knew that the it was a death sentence by making all these changes because uh, Rhode Islanders, if there's one thing I can say about New Englanders, we hate change. We hate it. And I know Tony Morris hates change. I know, I know the man a little bit and I know, I know that he hated that. I can't say that he uh, did this, but I think there's going to be major division and, and uh, some people are going to go with the old ways, Rick, and not the new ways. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Well, listen, I had the conference locked. It's now the unlocked. The conference has been unlocked. So the conference is now unlocked. If you'd like to come in and say something, my goodness, you're, you're open to say it. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, well, I got some information this week uh, concerning a Bethelite speaker. You know, Bethelites go out and they speak in congregations. And I, I'm, I'm going to uh, give this here right after I listen to Dick Borgie. Uh, I'm going to tell you what a Bethelite was saying about the new stance on the beards. Uh, Dick, what do you have to say, Dick? You're on with us. Yeah, I think the watch that was killing um, the deal, that uh, blood issue, I, I, I really think that's going to be it. I think a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses remember I know somebody, I know a family, I know somebody in another congregation. They had accused blood and died, and they were uh, made friends. Also, they know that they have a liaison committee. They were rushed to a hospital to a Jehovah's Witness attack. Hey, Dick. Hey, Dick. Hey, Dick. Hey, Dick. Hold on. You, you said the secret word. You said the secret word. Liaison committee. <laughs> yeah, you said the secret word. So the duck, uh, the ducks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said you said the secret word, so I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you and Connie this book right here, uh, a people for his name. It's a, it's a book that I want you guys to read. You and Constant will love it. So it's gonna be on the way. It'll be out this week. All right, Dick. Thank you. You said the secret word. I'm not, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that's what goes in. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Well, just just basically, his witnesses. Realize that people in other congregations have lost brothers and sisters due to not having a blood transfusion. And um, now all of a sudden, that's, I mean, that was one of Jehovah's staunchest rules. They took some scriptures out of Leviticus and twisted it around, and they made it, uh, you just can't take a blood transfusion. And now, well, you know, it's not a law anymore. Well, evidently, Jehovah was wrong when he wrote the Bible or their interpretation of his writings because now that there's well it's really not a rule anymore. It's it's a um, matter of conscience. Thanks for that. Oh there you go Dick. Thank you very much. Okay, we get on the call around with us right now. Go ahead, sir. You're with us or ma'am, I'm not sure. And he comes through as an anonymous. Go ahead, you're on with us. Ah, this is Jamie. I was just calling this thing just with the changes, I think everybody's overreacting with. It's like, you don't have to do as much time to your hours. You don't have to shave. You can have a beard. You can have uh, class if you're a woman. You can be spoken to if you go to the Kingdom Hall if you're just fellowship. That is not being associated with. Only spoken to is the way I understood that. And I think people are overreacting, thinking that 
the witnesses are going to start speaking to them if they're disfellowship. Pretty clear what he said. Only give them a greeting. That's it. Well, you're right with that, brother. No, in fact, you know, they tried that back in the 70s as well, where they kind of let loose yes. a little bit, where you could actually, uh, you know, speak with a disfellowship one at the meeting. But that's at the meeting. They're not really saying that Sanderson didn't say to speak with a disfellowship one if you see him walking around town or in a supermarket. He said at the meeting, right? That's correct. Only give them a greeting, that's it. If you're considered an apostate, you're worse than a pedophile. Yeah, so it it actually, I mean, you could greet a murderer, you could greet, you could greet, you could greet a pedophile, you can't greet an apostate. So it really, you know, I was saying there really isn't much of a change there. Uh, people are reading oh. a little more into it than they are, but no, then you're right on the ball, brother. Thank you. That's good. So well, what do you think? Well, what's the future of this dress code? Is that gonna change anything? They're trying to dress everything up to make it look good for the Japanese lawsuits, for the lawsuits going on in Pennsylvania, for the ones in Norway still that they're going to try to appeal again, for the one in Spain, for the one coming up in Germany. They are just trying to dress everything up to make it look presentable to the court systems, and it's not going to work. Well, they're trying so hard. They're, not going to their they're trying so hard to uh, to try to make them blend in with uh, other religions and it's going to be a real hard trek for them where they've been so cultish and so adamant on restrictions what you can do what you can't do it's going to be so hard for them uh, even though they're making these rapid fire changes i don't know if they can change over that fast before people get catch on to them you know they would have to get rid of 1914s and, you know, 6 and 7, they're never going to change. They would have to change several of their policies, several of the way they run things, and that's not going to happen. So it's just, they're going to give an illusion like they always had. They're going to play semantics. You know, it's always going to be the same result. They're going to be in control, and they're going to dictate to people what they can do. That's the way it appears to be. Oh, boy, we're so glad you called into the program tonight. I think this is the first time that we heard you before. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, thank you for calling back. But don't be a stranger. We we love to hear what you have to say. You, you make a lot of sense, and you uh, you certainly uh, know what you're talking about. It seems like you. How long were you with us? Uh, most of my life, from fifty nine to fifty years. There you go. Yeah, I was in that much that long myself. But well, well thank you for calling in. Uh, well, for, let me rephrase that. Fifty five years. Fifty five years. Yeah, that's a long time to be in. And what a waste of time when you think about it, huh? It makes makes us all sad yeah. to think we gave so much time and effort and resources and money and everything else to the Watchtower. And here we are today looking at them going, you bums, you really took us over the hurdles. Unbelievable. 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 Well, well, thank you, brother. Thank you for, for calling in. I appreciate it. Uh, Hello? Uh, yeah, Hello. Go, go ahead, 732. You're on with us, yep. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um... What I have, I think I just said a big thing that now blood is a matter of sunshine. Is that true? Uh, well, it's actually been true for a while. It's a matter of conscience. Uh, I call the legal. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, well, it's been in effect for quite a number of years. I, I don't know when they said it, but it would have been back around 19, I'd say 1997, 98. I call the legal department. No, I don't think so. Because when I was when I was there, I was there in the two thousand. You were still not a big assumption. You were still forbidden. Uh, yeah, well, I think in two thousand one, he was forbidden. Right, but I mean, I called the watchtower. I think the question was okay. Well, let me let me tell. The question was okay. Well, I mean, let me give you the whole story. So I called the watchtower okay. back in nineteen ninety seven, I believe, and I talked to a watchtower lawyer. And he said, yeah, it's, it's a matter of conscience. He says, but, he says, we're not going to disfellowship someone. They're going to disfellowship themselves. You follow? That's what he told me. So they're not going to bring you in before a judicial committee hearing and disfellowship you because you took a blood transfusion. They're going to consider you disfellowshipped on your own. So it's a matter of conscience, but the punishment is still the same. You got it? 
completely forbidden. That was it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's what I was told. So, so how are you doing out there in New Jersey? Okay, I'm thinking about going to the movie tomorrow, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> well, it's not really. Well, I'm going to protest, but that's about it. Oh, well, thank you, thank yeah. you for coming. Always good to hear from you. You got that, uh, you got that Jamaican accent. I always like to hear that. So, thank you very much for calling into the program. Oh, hey, I said Jamaican. I, I meant Haitian. I meant I meant Asian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I, I like that yeah. accent. We, I, I can always tell it to you by your accent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. When you're on JW World News, that's the news the Watchtower doesn't want us talking about. We talk about it every Saturday night right here on the Six Screens Telenetwork. Go ahead, 248, I believe it is. Uh, go ahead, 248. You're on with us. All right, Rick. I uh, just wanted to share some more information regarding uh, the Ginger plan uh -huh. of the JW updates. And it's very interesting. Uh, I found out that after 2034, there will be no more conventions or assemblies planned. And local meetings will be redesigned as the original Bible studies group. Also, the name Jehovah's Witnesses will no longer be used beyond 2034. And um, the source says that he's not aware of what the new name will be. So that's very interesting. Also, the uh, weekend meetings time will be shortened with a public talk and a 10, 12 paragraph Bible's discussion based on an article in the Washington State Edition. Uh, so that's very, very interesting. Also, uh, he indicated in 2034, they will be doing a feature leaf lip film based on the entire book of Acts. And after the film, the JWs will hope to be closer to the first century Christians. So those are very, very interesting uh, situations within that 10 year plan that uh, I think I talked to you about a few weeks ago regarding this 10 year plan that they hired this consulting firm and uh, a PMO from Bethel is sharing this information, this inside information, exactly what's going to happen within the 10 years. Well, there you go. Yeah, no, that uh, well, that's interesting. I really appreciate you bringing that forward. I have heard a little bit of that. Uh, 2034, uh, from what I understand, is going to be a pivotal year. They're almost looking to that year like they've been looking at 1914. As a matter of fact, there's a movement from what I have been told taking place, but I don't know for sure, but there's a movement taking place as I speak to get rid of 1914 and to move that year up to 1934. So, of course, that would really be able to make it possible because, you know, they would always say this generation wouldn't pass away before Armageddon, but they're all gone now. So the Watchtower is eating crow. So there is a movement that I have heard that is going to try to make 1934 the new 1914 and start the whole cycle over again. Yeah, see, what, what I believe, uh, Rick, is that the ones who have been with us for some time, this is going to be a very disruptive thing for them. Just like the dress code, it's going to be very disruptive because these are major changes. You're talking about no assemblies and no conventions anymore. They, they're going to do that anymore. They're going to get rid of the name Joseph Witnesses. It's going to be a new name. So this is going to be very, very uh, upsetting to the long-term Joseph Witnesses. Well, that all has to do with uh, that all has to do with Ramapo, as I said earlier. You know, they want to really connect worldwide. They want to go do more televangelizing, just like, you know, the Christians do on the networks, Daystar Network and Trinity Network. They feel that's the way to go. So as we talked about it for many years here now, they're, they're trying to put together this audio video studio up in Ramapo. And they want to be able to reach out to the world and get all these new recruits. But they have to make all these changes 
you know, to get people to connect with the witnesses. People aren't going to connect with the witnesses if they have to report time to them, if they can't wear a beard, if they have to wear a tie. They're not going to connect. They're going into a whole new religion, a whole new religion. That's the that's the uh, demise. That That's what their plan is. I, I have an interesting call, a phone call this morning. My sister called me, and I, we hadn't talked in a while, and she called me to invite me to the memorial. And I told her, I, I was telling her, I said, you know, can I ask you a question? And she said, yes. I said, does Jehovah God change his mind? Said, said no. I said, then why is all these changes in the organization? That should give you some pause to think about that. Why all these changes? Because it's an organization of men, not God. And uh, this is why I think with these changes, I'm hopeful that the long term witnesses will begin to wake up and realize that this is not an organization run by God, but ran by men. And I'm hoping, hopeful that these changes will wake them up and give them some cause to think that uh, this is not uh, God's organization. Never has been. Well, there you go. I mean, that's that, that's a sensible statement to make. It never has been. But they pulled the wool over so many people's eyes, including me, including you, including so many others listening to this program. But their day is done. Stick a fork in them. Take them off the grill. They have nowhere to go, brother. And more and more people finding out. There's so many people leaving right now. It's unbelievable. So, but doesn't that make you feel good? Doesn't it make you feel good so many people leaving? It, it, yeah, it does. And, you know, what, what I think about the 1960s when you and I were going to the meetings, you know, our Bible study was based on the book Babylon the Great Has Fallen. You remember that book? Oh, yeah. And um, that was supposed to be the truth, that was what, we, what happened to that book, Devil on the Greatest Fallen. They don't talk about it anymore. Back in, it, was, it was released in 1963, and that was our book that we used for the book study. Now that no longer is a part. So if that wasn't true back then, then how can this be true now? If the truth is the truth, it's not something that you can change. Truth is, is the standard. So that's why I pulled it to my sister. I said, you know, the old God changes his mind. No, okay, then why all these changes? Very simple question. Well, well, that's a good question because that's exactly right. And so your sister probably kind of was trying to come up quick with an answer, but you really can't. If Jehovah God behind this organization and they keep changing things, then Jehovah wasn't giving them the truth in the first place. That's right. And uh, the truth is the truth. So therefore, it shouldn't be any changes. Yeah, and you know the thing, the thing regarding the beards, it was never scripturally based. And uh, what they should have done was just say, "Look, we don't want you guys wearing beards. We want you guys clean shaven." That's what they should have said instead of saying this is scriptural. And so what they do is when they make these decisions, they base it on scripture, which is not based on scripture, which is untrue. So consequently, this is what gets them in, in trouble because it's not based on any scriptures at all. Never was. Well, that's exactly right. And that's right right now is what's causing a lot of dissension in the organization. You know, they're beginning to see that, you know, you never really gave us scriptures on why we couldn't, women couldn't wear slacks. You never gave us, you know, any scriptures on why men couldn't wear a beard. But now all of a sudden you made some type of a reversal on this. So they're saying, well, you know, is this organization really looking out for my interests? Are they lying to me? So people are really questioning this now. So it's, it's just a matter of time, I, I do believe. And we're going to see so many people right now, they're leaving right right now. I'm telling you that there are as many PMOs, that is p people that are physically and mentally out. They're just going because they don't want to be caught in a trap, so to speak, of being shunned. So they're just going to the meetings. But there's as many PMOs as there is active PMEs active Jehovah's Witnesses. Isn't that something? Yes, and, they, and they've lost their distinctive look. That clean-cut look that we had when we went out field service with a necktie and a, and a jacket and a clean-shaven face, uh, that was a distinctive look. And they've lost their distinctive look. Now they look like everyone else. So therefore, it, it, you know, they come to someone's door 
and they're going to get rid of that eventually as well, uh, they have lost their distinctive look. Oh, one other thing, too. The, the carts will be gone as well. By 2034, they're going to get rid of the carts as well. No more street carts. Well, I can see this all happening because they're going to have that studio. That They're really hoping for that studio. And they just hope to yeah. reach people through their broadcasting network. And they hope to be able to raise funds and get new recruits. So that, that's the area they're heading in. Brother, thank you. It's always good to hear from you. You have, you have so much good things to share with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Dr. Richard, can I say something? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You're on with us. Um, Dr. Richard, yes. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, we, yes, yes, we can, Dr. Richmond. Yes, go ahead. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I just want to comment about that uh, new thing about saying you can now say hello to this fellowship person. They still have it wrong because they said, well, you just can't say hello to an apostate. But if you go back and you do the research on that scripture, um, the history at that time, there was a movement, the Gnostics, with the G, the Gnostics and uh, they went around as false teachers teaching that Jesus did not die in the flesh and was raised in the spirit. So they were the false teachers that were spreading this um, this false information. So um, what that scripture was about was if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching of Jesus that he uh, you know died and died in the flesh and so forth, uh, then don't say hello to them. So it only applied to the people who were these belong to this movement, the Gnostics, and that movement's died out. So that scripture is no longer applicable to anybody because it only applied to those specific ones that went around with this false teaching that Jesus did not die in the flesh. So they're still wrong about their interpretation of it. Well, there you go, Dr. Richmond. You did your research, but that's that's true. That's sensible. See that? I mean, we, we can get to yeah. watch, we can get to watch that on so many issues. If only the witnesses would listen. That's the problem. Geez, we can bring them the facts, we can yeah. bring them the truth, but they just turn a deaf ear. Always good to hear from you, well, Dr. Richmond. They're stuck in a bubble. Yeah, they're stuck in a bubble is right. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh, keep up the good work. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, they're just stuck in a bubble, and, and, and they can't escape because it's like coming out of the matrix. They can't accept the reality. They have to stay in there for their mental health. And some of them, that's why do they stay in for their mental health? And what are they going to do if they get out? There's no light for them. All their... All their friends are Jehovah's Witnesses and everybody their whole life and revolves around it. So there's absolutely nothing for them if they leave this thing anyway. So that's why many are so fearful that they have to mentally stay in, I think. I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, we're on the same team. Thank you. That's, okay, right. Take that, care. Thank you very much. That's Dr. Richmond. Yeah, go ahead. We get to Chicago, Illinois. Go ahead. Stephen, I just want to pick those last two comments and just kind of put them together. When people um, start asking these questions as to why they're making so many changes, just gently remind them that the organization says that they are not inspired of God. They have said that four times in print recently uh, in a video that came on a watchtower. And so you just add something to that. Why would you blindly follow an organization which is telling you they are not inspired of God? It makes no sense. No sense at all, Stefan. No sense at all. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, well, anyways, I want to talk about this Bethelite uh, that went out and gave a talk. Now, we, we know that that's what the Bethelites would do from time to time. You probably had them come and give a talk in your congregation, right? I mean, I know they did us here in Massachusetts. But anyways, a Bethelite went out and he made a talk, and a person was nice enough to give me this information, and he heard what the Bethelite had to say. He said, that uh, everyone at Bethel right now, everyone, he said, he used the term everyone is growing a beard now. In fact, uh, he says this being highly encouraged at Bethel for the brothers to grow a beard. So that, that's an interesting thing. And then also, uh, we just said, I just have to mute some people here. They come on and they, they you're going to mute them here so that we don't get this background noise. So, any, anyways, the brother was saying that everyone's encouraged to grow a beard. And he said that after Armageddon, when the patriarchs of old are resurrected first, uh, we don't want them to think that we are pagans and clean shaven. So he's saying that the Jehovah's Witness organization Watchtower is encouraging the brothers to wear beards so that when the patriarchs of old come back in the resurrection, they will see other people that look like them. They all had beards, right? The patriots. 
and uh, the in the pagans were clean shaven. So this is what's spreading around the congregations that, you know, that's why the brothers are growing beards. So they won't, uh, so when the patriots come back, they're not going to get the witnesses uh, mixed up with pagans. Now that is a stupid explanation, right? Uh, so uh, he continued to encourage the brothers and sisters to imagine immediately after Armageddon, when the patriots are awoken to, to come out of the graves and see clean shaven men, it would really be shocking. Can, can you, would, would you buy that? I mean, I'm not buying that for anything. So the patriots likely would be shocked by the lack of beards as they would be by the watchtower misapplying the scriptures they actually wrote down. So, you know, the watchtowers misapplied the scripture the patriarchs wrote for us in the Bible. I mean, wouldn't they be more shocked with that than the witnesses, modern day witnesses not having a beard? Can, can you really imagine the watchtower governing body telling the Bible writers the meaning of the scriptures they wrote? I can imagine that. I can imagine that. That, uh, you know, I can remember when we studied the Daniel book and, you know, comments were being made. You remember the Daniel book? I remember studying that years ago. And a comment was made once at the book study. A person said, isn't it going to be wonderful when Daniel comes back that we can actually help him to understand the Bible? Hey, friends, Dan Daniel doesn't have to have the modern day witness help him understand the Bible. Uh, so this is just absolutely crazy. So this Bethel brother is saying that, you know, we have to grow beards now because we can't be clean shaven because we will look like pagans. That is a crock of baloney. And then he concluded uh, how genuinely loving this change is in Jehovah's organization and Jehovah's chariot is moving forward. That is a bunch of crap, Ola. Can, can you imagine that? Uh, then there's other explanations too. Have you heard some of the explanations that the Pemis, the loyal Jehovah's Witnesses, are saying about the beards and the dress and grooming changes in the watchtower? Uh, some people, in fact, I've heard this a number of times from, from the JW sites, that uh, they're saying that the watchtower is making these changes. They're making these changes so that we can blend in with the worldly people during the Great Tribulation. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's not sensible either. So just saying, hello, yeah, hello. Tim, I think, from Australia. Hello, Tim. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, it is, Rick. Just what you were saying about that nonsense of the, um, the beard thing in the new system, it's, it's kind of funny because back in the day when I used to go, the witnesses that knew about Beth Serim used to laugh, you know, like, oh, you know, they used to believe that nonsense and kind of laugh about it like it was a funny a funny de developmental phase of the witnesses and you can joke about it, but they're falling for the same spiel again. Um, you know, you're going to use this in the new system. Um, the beard thing, that's one. They ran a po and that movie thing they're making in Australia, that's supposedly going to teach people in the new system. You, you know, um, Blaine was talking about it one time when he goes, you know, he's making a joke like, David, get yourself a cup of water. It's like, what the hell? You know, I suppose that's just keeping the rank and file, like ooing and ahhing about the wisdom of the governing body planning ahead into the new system and how they know all this nonsense they're projecting is going to take place when it's just pulled out, pulled out of their art, so as to speak. Thanks, Rick. Well, thank you, Tim. No, it's all a bunch of baloney, Tim. I, I can't believe that the watchtower is really steep, steep this low and sending Bethelites out and saying that, you know, the reason why we're growing beards is so that the patriots coming back won't think that we're pagans. That That is stupid. The, the real right reason why they're growing beards, the real reason why women are wearing slacks, the real reason why they don't report time anymore is they're trying to become more mainstream. Who would want to join a religion that puts this type of restraints on people? The answer is nobody. So that's the answer. That, 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 that's the answer right there in a nutshell. Uh, it's just unreal what they're trying to do and they're continuing to try to pull the wool over people's eyes. Uh, French, it seems like as of late, the truth as we knew it, the watchtower, 
It's changing with every sunrise. We don't know what's going to happen. Now, in another week or so, they're going to have, well, maybe a week and a half, they're going to do another update. And it'll be on JW.org. And who knows what the new update is going to be? Many people writing in and speculating what's going to happen. But who knows? Uh, I, I know there's going to be more changes, uh, no doubt about it. But, you know, there's many thoughts right now in the, in the world of the Jehovah's Witnesses why they're making these changes. I, I've read so many reasons why they are from so many different ex-witnesses as well. But I came across this. Now, this this might make sense to you. It might not. I don't know. But uh, this one man gave me some information. And he said the reason why the organization is making these changes, why men can wear beards especially, you know, focusing on the beard situation, he says because the Watchtower is this global biblical epic movie machine. Well, they're making all kinds of videos of the old days and the Israelites and Jesus. And he says that, you know, they, they need a lot of people to be fill-ins. And so by allowing the men to have real beards, uh, that would help them because they need a lot of extras in the movies. And he was saying that it's very expensive to buy fake beards. They're very costly. So he seems to think that's the reason. I, I don't know if that's the reason or not, but it's another explanation. I'm hearing all of these crazy explanations on why they're changing. But I don't think it's because of the movies they're making. I really don't. What do you think? I'm like, what, what are your reasons? You know, I'm giving my thoughts here, but I want, I want to hear from you. Yeah, you're on with us. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, how you doing, Rick? Good. Yeah. You, you know, when you talk to a witness sometimes and you think you make a statement that would make them come to Jesus, have a come to Jesus moment, and they realize. I, I did talk to my older friend today, or a couple of days ago, long conversation. We talked about an hour and a half. And I was telling him about all the things that were going on in Norway and all these different items and all these different changes. And I thought, you know, now Mark will come to the senses on this. He'll, he'll understand. And his comment was, well, you know, Michael, you know, the Jews were, were Jesus or were Jehovah's chosen people, but he corrected them. And he corrected them through governments. And so what's happening in Norway right now is just Jehovah using the government to correct organization. I about, I about dropped the phone. I just I couldn't believe it. And uh, you know, this man is a smart man. <laughs> and uh they just they just seem like they it just it just goes right past them. You know, it just goes right past them. I, just, I don't even know what else to say anymore. Well, Michael, you're not the only one that's frustrated with this. You, you can't. How do you reason with a witness? I mean, you can't. How do you reason with someone that's unreasonable? It's just totally frustrating uh, to even try. Uh, you know what it is, though? My, my, my thought on this is the person, in order to reason with a witness, that they have to have one foot out of the organization. They have to be a doubter. Then you can get them to listen. Yes. But so someone that's still deep into it, that they're not. Yeah. You can try as hard as you want. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Yeah. And I don't think my friend's unreasonable because I'm able to talk to him about many different situations. I mean, and he's, I mean, he's been the elder. I mean, his whole family, he was in Bethel. He, his whole family was in Bethel. Yeah. He, he, he's down in Florida. I mean, he, he's a big time. And uh, it, but it, it, it's always the organization. It's always Jehovah. And even where I told him, I said, "Look, Mark, you know I know the language, okay? And Jehovah's not is not God's name. Uh, you know, and that way, well, that's that's the American accept. That's how we accept it today, you know. And as he uh, and I went on with him through the Passover, how Jesus didn't start a new memorial. He didn't, that wasn't a new thing. He was, he was celebrating the Passover. And all he was saying is say that the blood represented the blood that was put on the doorpost. Now do this in remembrance of me now, because I'm the, I'm the blood that's going to save the world. Yeah. Goes, goes right past it. It just goes right past it. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, I'm going to be going down to the yeah. memorial tomorrow night and uh, doing a protest in front of the Kingdom Hall. And it's so, discouraging 
I'm a Christian man. And to supposedly go to a kingdom hall that supposedly is a Christian hall, which it's not, but where people would come together and take of the emblems. And they're told not to do it. There's something drastically yeah. wrong with this. <laughs> something is drastically yeah. wrong with that. And it's, it's actually, you, you imagine, really, uh, these guys are going to have the answer someday. And even if the governments don't catch yeah. up on them, you know, God Almighty is going to see these guys have really twisted the truth. And, you know, another thing, too, I was thinking that they're going to have to change, uh, you know, not just the dress and the beards, but they're going to have to, well, there's no feelings, rumors, if you would, that I've been told here. They've, I've been getting information sent to me that they're going to change 1914. They're, they're going to drop that. Uh, and one of the reasons... <laughs> Yeah, no, no, don't take it to the bank and cash it. Uh, don't take it to the bank and cash it because it's still, I don't know for sure because they hear a lot of things. But they're saying that Charles Taze Russell, he really was not a member of the faithful and discreet slave. Uh, people didn't become members of the faithful and discreet slave until 1919 when Jesus came down, examined all the religions of the world and said, well, the Jehovah's Witnesses are the right ones. So they're saying now that Russell wasn't one of the slaves and he kind of jumped ahead. Now, whether this is true or not, but these are these are things that I've been hearing. So they will be dropping from what I understand, or when time will tell, 1914. But that is the nucleus, that that is the central theme of Jehovah's Witnesses. They're going to have to do that surgically. They, they, they cannot... They did not just, so what I understand is there's a four, uh, a four, four uh, study articles that will be dealing with this. And it looks like they're going to move 1914 up to 1934. They're going to say that 1934 was a pivotal year. Now, what that did is just buy a whole lot of new recruits and start the whole thing over again. That, that's what I've heard. So only time will tell. I, I can't tell you for sure. But also the other thing they're going to have to change, and then they got to do this because it's just causing more dissension than you would think. Now, I'm going to be at the memorial tomorrow. I'm not going in. They won't let me go in, obviously. So the police have told me, don't go in. You can protest. But I'm going to be very anxious to see what the partakers are this year. And I'm thinking the partakers could shoot up to 30,000. Right now, they're around 21, 22,000. But for 2024, I'm thinking they're going to really shoot up because a lot of people are going to say, that's it. You know, I, you know, I don't want to leave God behind. I, I think a lot of people are going to find some truth. I think they're going to find real Christian understanding and, and they're going to partake. So only time will tell on that. But the thing is, Mike, they, they have to get rid of the 144,000 doctrine. That is, yeah. that's yeah, we talked, that's, another, that's another thing we talked about uh, in the conversation. I think, you know, you never know how you affect people that, uh, I know you say, I've wasted my time as a Jehovah's Witness or something like that, but you know what? All that time the Jehovah's Witness brought you to this point here, to where you're helping millions of people. And so I want you to keep that up. And also, I think one of the greatest things you ever did, and I found it accidentally, I was looking on YouTube, where I've seen an ex-Jehovah's Witness talk about his time as being a witness but stand in the church and serve and partake of the communion. And I watched that movie or that film you on YouTube, and I sat there and cried. Oh, yeah, no, no, it, would, it, ever, it could bring tears. Don't ever underestimate yourself. Yeah, no, it, it could bring tears to your eyes to see this. It's, it's very sad. But tomorrow night, for those that will be coming on our YouTube channel, we will be in front of the Kingdom Hall. One Bridge Lane in Wellington, Massachusetts, with a protest. Uh, we have a permit, and if anyone would like to join us, if you're in the New England area and you want to come down, come on down and see us. We'll have a Domino's Pizza, deliver some pizza. We'll have a good time. So we'll be out protesting. It's going to be cold, but I have a heater. I have a little heater we'll be bringing with us. But we get some excellent banners. In fact, let me put up right now. I, I want to put up a banner. Just give us a second. This is, this is our newest sign that we're going to put up. Now, take a, look, take a look at this sign right here. That is the sign that we're going to be putting up uh, at the uh, at the Kingdom Hall tomorrow night. Now, that sign, if you're listening on Radio Network, you can't see it, but uh, it shows a picture on one side of a man with a beard, 
It shows some women with slacks, and the main heading on the banner is Norway gives Watchtower a new light. That that's the reason why there's new light in the Watchtower is because of Norway. So you can, you can see that. <laughs> so that yeah, well, like like my brother said, it's the government using them to yeah. refine the organization. Yeah. You know. Oh well, that's a banner that we, we made up. That banner is uh, three feet by ten. 10 feet. You're going to see that out there tomorrow night on our YouTube channel, right in front of the Kingdom Hall. And uh, I get some brochures. I, I think that we're going to get some takers. I, I think, think some people will be talking to us tomorrow. We want to see if they're wearing slacks, the women that is. We want to see if the men are wearing no ties. Uh, we'll be on beard and slack watch tomorrow. So looking forward to that. But you know, Mike, they're making such well, a big deal. Well, thank you. Well, they're making well, well, thank you. They're making such a big deal, you know, about slacks and beards. But you know, they'll just pass the wine by. Why don't they make a big deal about that? You know, jeez. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yes, you're on this. Yes, Steve. A couple thoughts. If they do change their scene by in the next ten years, they'll do it through gradualism. They'll eliminate as far as assemblies. They'll eliminate one day. No one's going to really make a big deal out of it, you know, as far as assemblies. If they're three, four days, they'll take a day off. And a few days later, they'll take another day. And then they will come up with an excuse as to why it's down to one day. And then when they limit the last day, people will be so used to it. And that's how the society, one of the tools that they use over the years. And um, the other thought is, I believe the memorial is on the wrong day this year, because the new moon occurs April, the spring moon after the equinox is April 8th. That's the moon that they should go by, not the moon before. And 14 days after that would be um, around April 22nd. So I don't know if anybody's brought that up. Well, no, not, well, you're absolutely right with that. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow when we go to the memorial. But I'll tell you why the Watchtower is doing it. You know, they always have to step ahead and be the all-encompassing understanding of the Bible and the Scriptures. So what the, what the Watchtower is saying this year, because I'll tell you, it's kind of early. I've been protesting now for going on 16 years in front of this Kingdom Hall. And there's only one other time that it was early. It was on the March 23rd once. but Generally, it's in April, and uh, what the Watchtower is saying is that the modern Jewish calendar is not what they go by. Now, the, the nation, the Jewish people, they, they go by their modern calendar, but they're saying like every so many years there's a leap year, and then it has to add up to, you know, it would be less, it would be, actually not a year, but a month and weeks, so that there would be less this year. So they're going by the old Jewish calendar that uh, this is when when Jesus was alive, this is the date it would have been. So they're holding steadfast to that. They're not going along with the modern calendar. But I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow night. Isn't that something, Steve? But the watch that always has to be, they have to be so different than everybody else, you know, just to show that they're right, you know? Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Oh, Steve, always good to hear from you. Always good to hear from you. You've been coming in for a long time now, and we, we love that. Always love to hear from Steve. Well, you were on JW World News. That's the news. The Watchtower doesn't want us talking about but we talk about it every Saturday night. Uh, if anyone would like to come on and say something, go ahead. Uh, hit start. Yeah, hello, Mr. Farron. Uh, yes, uh, Ken. Good to hear from you. Yeah, good hearing from you again, too. So, yeah, I've uh, been an interesting night. Got locked out for a while, but I got back in here. So finally, yeah, I'm gonna comment even to what we've been talking about tonight. Okay, the watch. When I was studying with the Watchtower, and I'm sure when you were studying with them too and all that, they were teaching you up the yin yang. God does not change. Here we can prove it right here. We can show it to you. God does not change. Uh, neither are we gonna change. We're gonna go by the book, you know, all the time. Uh, take a look at what's happening right now. Changes, changes, changes. Uh, I wonder what's going on here. Watchtower Society, if you're listening, please explain that to me. Uh, God doesn't change. You don't either, but you're making all kinds of changes. So many darn changes you can't even count. Uh, that's one thing. 
And then they're making all kinds of rules and regulations. I heard you talking about a while ago that they've never showed you any scriptures regarding ladies' slacks or beards and all that, Mr. Fern. That's because there aren't any because in those days they went by the customs of the country. So most of those clothing codes and everything like that, the clothing they wore was customs of the country, not because they went according to some kind of scripture. Now there are certain cultic religions that will teach you that the eye it does talk about you know stuff like that and i'm not going to go into it but no it does not because i've done research on that and it comes out you know right there that's why when we had that discussion a while ago here a lot of people are confused on it and so forth so and they're always changing their doctrines i mean how many times have they changed their doctrines uh, and so forth. And then one last comment here, they're talking about changing their name and all that. Well, I was predictable that that was going to happen. It's not going to be a matter of if, it's just when and so forth. They've done that in times past and all that. Every time they outgrew or uh, their, or outdated their old name, they went and they changed it. Dead years ago, they're going to do it again. But uh, guess what? None of the none of the stuff is going to work. They're going to relax the standards all they want. They can make changes all they want. They can uh, re relax their standards all they want, and you know, try to accommodate the people. It's not going to work because people are onto them, and they're on the downward trend, and it's and they're on their way out. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you, Ken, and you've been listening to this program for a long time, and I think that you'll even have to agree that, boy, things are really heating up. It's amazing, isn't it, Ken? Uh, yes, it is. It's really heating up. Compared to when I first come on the program that was many years ago and all that, and as time went on, we've seen more changes and more things happening since the COVID time than we ever did before. And, uh, it keeps on. We keep on seeing things happening in the watchtower. And I think it's going to keep right on happening until they topple over. Well, that's what they're doing right now. I can really see them toppling over. Yeah. Ken, always good to hear from you from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Thank you for checking in with us tonight. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. It's good hearing from you, too. And, and uh, we'll keep listening here. All righty. We hope we get another caller in here. Oh, Some yeah. We got a lot Thank you. A lot of people coming in tonight. That's good. So, anyways, let's yeah. take. Yeah, go ahead. You're on with us, sir. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Zach. Yes, I had to brush off my use of the word brother, brush the dust off of it because I got a few more calls um, this, this week. Um, and, and I have to say this about the governing body. Um, I think some people use the term governing body 2.0, but I think it's starting to move into 3.0 because weren't there two brothers recently appointed to the governing body? And some of the ones who were there, um, the first new one was Brother Lowe's, and I think of people before him as governing body 1.0. But it, some of the changes, I think, are because you got different people, and um, it, it really is different. This week, I got a text from somebody um, inviting me to the memorial, and saying that I should look at update the update on JW.org, and I was told I would find one of the governing body members sporting a beer, and I can find out about that on update number one. Um, and my phone number is a new phone number, so if somebody sends to me, you know, new as in seven years old, if somebody from before texts me, I might not know who it is. So I text, texted back and said, who is this text from? <laughs> and it turns out that the text was from uh, someone that I was kind of close to. Uh, we hung out in the same group of friends. We were, Several of us who often went to um, dinner together, that kind of thing. But I was invited to the memorial. And then, yeah, another thing, last night I got a, a phone call. You showed up a Hello? A 
Uh, go ahead with us, uh, Jack. Go ahead. Don't, don't, okay. Yeah, don't. Okay. Yeah. Muted. I was on a phone call. I, I mean, I was not on a phone call. My phone rang. I didn't recognize the number. And then when I was able to sit down and look at my phone, it was a text from a sister that I probably haven't spoken to for uh, directly for like uh, almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. Wow. And she was talking about how missed I was. And that there's this arrangement where we can encourage people and invite them to the memorial. And um, she hopes that I will go to the memorial. And if I can't, if I don't know where it is in my area, I can be um, go in on their Zoom. This is someone from a different state. I can go in on their Zoom. And then, so when I'm reading all this, I'm, I'm remembering this person. This is one of my favorite people, and I'm getting beads of sweat on my forehead, and I have to turn on the fan. And because there is an emotional part to this, because some of these are people we really did know and, and, and love. And so I listened to my messages this morning, and it was like the person, it was her, and she had left me a message. And the one thing she said, was now you'll recognize my phone number and I hope you will pick up the phone when I call. And it sounds almost like people are not just taking it as simply a greeting, but that they can do a little bit more talking than just a greeting at the hall. As it, long it, as it's encouragement, you know. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna be spiritual encouragement. You know, and why the the timing of it, the timing of the update? I think it was if it was going to come out, it was going to come out, but it was timed um, to come right before the memorial because they want to push people to the memorial. That's all I had to say. Well, bingo! I mean, that's a lot to say. That's a mouthful, Zach, because that's that's what I'm thinking too. The timing. They they want to get those numbers up. They gotta get those numbers up. Rick? Yes, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, go, go ahead. You're on with us. Yeah. Go ahead. You're on with us, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, anyways, you're on JW World News. Uh, we've got a few more minutes left here, and uh, we'll. Uh, we got one other story I wanted to cover uh, before we uh, before we leave here tonight. Uh, there's, there's one other. So you can't hear us on the phone. Okay, I guess we must have shut off here. Yes, okay. Okay. Everyone else can hear. Okay, hold on one second. We're just gonna. I gotta reset the phone lines here. Well, I'm not sure what happened here, but uh, all right. Let's. Uh, we're gonna reset the phone lines, friends. Uh, we're on. Uh, what happens? We're on a phone line here. It goes off every six hours. But just, Welcome into the live six screens So just give call. us a few minutes. Here. We'll get we right back on again, again. and uh, we'll get up and back talk. on again. Star six on your telephone. P people listen on the telephone line here, and it goes off every six hours. So just just give us a few minutes here. We'll get it back on and continue with our program. We hope you enjoy the program. All right. So just stay with us. We're looking forward to. More programming on here tonight. So we're looking forward to our program later on. We got more programs coming on. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us. All right. Just listen to the little prompt from the phone line here. And we all sit. All right. Let me get you, Zach. Okay. Yes. All right. Nine seven eight eight oh nine uh -huh. eight oh three six. You are convenient. We're both retired, so we'd love to talk to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Zach, for coming on. Uh, Dick, can you hear me? All right. Yeah, you're just fine. 
All right, you'll be coming on here very shortly. I just got a couple of announcements to make. Uh, we did have another story, but we'll let that story go. I'll just kind of briefly say what the story was about. Uh, and actually, I have to tell you that more and more sex abuse is taking place in the watch cell. This week, all, all across Australia, was a big uh, a big story about a pervert, an elder, who was a perverted person sexually abusing young people, as well as even some adults. And it was really a big story all, all over all over Australia. But I mean, this is nothing. Every single week as I go through the news, it's always about Jehovah's Witness involved in pedophilia. Now, this one here actually, uh, well, let me, let me get to the story here. Uh, his name is Peter, brother Peter Mitchelson. And uh, he was a Jehovah's Witness elder. And this week, charges were brought against him for abusing five adult male compliance. And uh, they were actually abused because of the connection that Mickelson had with the Jehovah's Witness faith. Now, these are the articles that people are reading all around the world. Now, no wonder why the governments and the countries are catching up with the Jehovah's Witnesses. They continue to hear this type of per perversion in the watchtower. Uh, this guy, Mickelson, he was actually Elder Mickelson. He was raping and sexually abusing young men on the Sunshine Coast for over 10 years. Uh, he actually had 50 sexual offenses, including 21 counts of rape uh, allegedly coming against him. Uh, he actually had, uh, well, he had seniority in a former congregation. He was an elder, and he would coerce the younger men to perform sexual acts for his gratification. How many times do we hear this? over and over again in the watchtower. Uh, it, it's just terrible when you stop and think about it that, you know, this stuff, uh, it's only now that the world is catching up on the witnesses. It's only now, I mean, they've been keeping this stuff quiet, but the internet is the great equalizer. And all of a sudden now, all of this stuff is hitting the fan on the watchtower. So, I mean, there's a lot more to talk about here, but I'm not gonna go into it all, but another elder in Australia, uh, accused of uh, ac accused of rape, accused of all kinds of perversion. So how how many more stories are going to hear like this? That that's why the countries are starting to really come down on the Jehovah's Witnesses. <clears throat> how many more deranged men have not even been found out about yet? So, anyways, I'm glad you're with us tonight. Uh, we're going to be going to Dick Borgie he has a program coming on here tonight, and I <clears throat> I want you guys to. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, to, to listen to. Just got a little frog in my throat here, excuse me. But I want to bring up many, many people on this program. They know Mark Taft. Uh, he had a program here on the Six Screens, and we want to wish him the best. He's moving on all his life. Mark uh, grew up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and he had a difficult time. He, he wanted to always be in the world of entertainment. But when he uh, was growing up, his parents... Uh, would not uh, help him with this. He wanted to. He wanted to be a movie star. He wanted to at least be in the movies. He he had this feeling that that was his calling, but uh, all of his life he was held back from it. But we're glad to announce here tonight that Mark has a uh, has an opportunity. He has an opportunity, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, that uh, he wanted us to share with you tonight. Mark Taff is now uh, has an opportunity to be in a film. And he's associated with a man by the name of uh, Richard Ryan, uh, who's not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, but he runs a film company called Ox Films. And Mark, who all his life wanted to get into the motion picture business, looks like he might be able to have a chance of doing that with this Richard Ryan, who he's become friends with. So we're, we're very proud of Mark for wanting to uh, pursue his career. He's not letting the Watchtower uh, leave him behind. Uh, there's a new movie that he might have an opportunity to appear in. Uh, it's Ox Films producing a movie. In fact, they've already produced it. It's called The Art of Deception. And he's going to, this Richard is going to be doing more movies and hopefully Mark can, can get his dream come true from a Jehovah's Witness to perhaps a movie star. So let's all root for Mark. Well, listen now, tomorrow night, tomorrow night we will be at the protest at the Wilmington Kingdom Hall in Massachusetts. We hope that you will be there with us. If you can come, if you're in the New England area, 
Come and join us. It's One Bridge Lane, Wilmington, Massachusetts. Uh, if not, of course, we're going to be live streaming beginning at 6.30 tomorrow night right here on the same YouTube channel as well as Facebook. So if you can come in and watch it tomorrow night, I think you'll find it fascinating. We'll be on Beard Watch. We'll be on Slack Watch. And uh, we'll have a good time tomorrow night right here on the Six Greens Tele Network. So don't miss that. I think you'll find it very, very fascinating. Uh, we have Dick Borgie coming up next. He has a program called DNC uh, with his wife, Connie. I don't think Connie's going to come on tonight. She's a little under the weather, but I believe Dick will be on with us. But anyway, I want to thank everyone for coming into the Six Greens tonight. Now, the duck, uh, Dick did get, uh, we have a duck that comes down. You can see the duck right up here. And if he comes down during our broadcast, there he is there, you can see him. If he comes down, which he did tonight, and Dick won a book. We have a number of books that we're giving away. And, uh, well, this is a new book we have right here, uh, People for His Name. Our good friend Nathan Natus of JW Discussion Board, he sent us a number of books that I want to give away. So Dick's going to get one of these books. Uh, and then also we've got uh, we've got four of them. So I'm going to send you one. You'll, you'll get a book. This one here is The Way to Paradise. And these are Watchtower, older Watchtower republished publications. So I'd love to be able to give those away. Now, uh, let me just grab my envelope. I'm going to open it. We have a sealed envelope tonight. And Dick Borgie, uh, he did get the liaison commis committee. That was one of the secret words. So let's see what the SO, that, there it is right there, this li liaison committee, you can see it. I'll put it right there, okay. The other secret word, well, I'm going to give you some clues. So let's see if we can't get someone to, to guess what this this was. We'll have like a little rot lightning round. And I'd love to give you one of the books as well. So here's a clue to one of the secret words that we had tonight. Uh, in service, when you were through with service, when you were going door to door, you had to fill out something. What did they call that? Ah, uh, no, it's not called a lot, not a home slip. Uh, Who would like to give another shot at it? You can win a prize here if you can take a shot at it. Go ahead and dial and tell us. A time report. You got you got it, Zachary. You got it. So I know you. I know you're probably not going to send me your address, or so not going to be able to send you the book. But you, you didn't win anyways. But if you, if, you, if you have enough courage, you send me the address, I'll send you one of these nice books I've got, okay? But we'll see what happens. All right, so those are the secret words. Okay, we have the sealed envelope. So Dick got one liaison committee and time slip. That was the other secret word. There it is right there. So we do that secret word thing every Saturday night. It's kind of fun. We have some fun with it. And we all had to fill out those time slips, right? But they don't have to do it anymore. Oh, they, they do give you a slip, but they don't call it a time slip. They give you a slip, and you check off the box. It just says, did you participate in the ministry? And you check a little box. Yes, I did. So there's a few little questions like that they ask. Well, thank you for coming in tonight. Hey, do we have fun here tonight? We had, I always have fun here on the six screens. And uh, well, we'll get another program coming up next. You don't want to miss it. Dick Borgie, he's got a lot to talk about tonight. Now, have you ever felt lonely? When you were one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I mean, not only when you were just fellowshipped, I mean, you would always feel lonely if that happened, but even when you were not just fellowshipped, if you were just a, an active witness, I know many witnesses were lonely. You know, they didn't really get to do things. You know, the elders would have a clique and they wouldn't invite you to their parties. They wouldn't invite you to the gatherings. But so even being a witness, not even just fellowship, you can be lonely. But Dick's going to talk about all that tonight. And I'm looking at numbers. We have a lot of people coming to the sixth screen. So all the new ones, thank you for listening in. Now, we do this every Saturday night. We've been doing it for 19 years. So we're not going anywhere. We're here because you are here. And we like to expose the Watchtower every Saturday night and every other Sunday. Now, there'll be no sixth screen Sunday tomorrow. It would just be too much to have a Sunday program with the memorial tomorrow night. So we will be back on the air tomorrow night in front of Wilmington Kingdom Hall with our protest. So uh, stay with us and listen in tomorrow. Uh, and I want you all to stand tall, keep waving that flag of victory. And the last one, 
leaving the watchtower, by all means, turn off the new light. Stay with us. we got more programming coming up next. And all those that called in and made comments, all those on YouTube commenting, all those calling in on the different, uh, well, on our telephone network and those on our platforms on Facebook, a number of groups as well. Thank you all for commenting. Thank you all. We'll see Dick Boger here very shortly. Appreciate your presence tonight.